Welcome back to the Placeholders Podcast, everybody. I'm Kaylee Fretz. Got a great show for you today. On today's show, can Sepp Kuss do it? How to fix Britain. Enemy's last ride and an agony aunt. Joining me today, welcome back to the show, Johnny Long. Hello, hello. Kit Nicholson, you look hello. excited. I'm excited. Yeah, you oh, look well. excited. Yeah. That Krabby's it's doing the job. <laughs> Yeah, I'm bubbly. I'm bubbly. I'm going. I'm ready. What do you got there? What do you got there? This is a uh, Scotland's best uh, grown-up soft drink. Um, Ooh. Crabby's alcoholic ginger beer. It's great. It's not got alcohol in it. No, I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> right. It is. It's it's late in no, the evening for you though. It it's would like be okay. it's like four percent. Yeah. Oh, that, that helps with the working. Hardly counts. Nice. No. Well, and everybody, you just heard there. Welcome back to placeholders, Ronan McLaughlin. It's a bit of a bit of a break there. Uh, you added one to the family, and you're back. Mm-hmm. Welcome back. How's your month? I am, thank you. Uh, exhausting, but but pretty good. Yeah, we have a new addition to the family. Um, what else happened in that month? Loads. I can't remember. But yeah, <laughs> back, back, back at work, and I'm I'm kind of wondering what's happened over here while I've been away because I, this was a cycling podcast when I left, and you've gone all political there. You introduced how to fix Britain, which. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure we're qualified, but anyway, I'm qualified though, absolutely. Okay, as a, okay. as an impartial observer, I think that I can probably provide some real insight. Hmm. You've listened to a podcast or two, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get into today's show. Uh, we got to start with the biggest topic of the week, particularly if you are an American, a flag waving American, just like myself. Uh, Johnny, I, I have noticed that you have been enjoying you've been enjoying the many America gifts that exist out yep. there. There's an endless supply uh, of of just fantastic, deeply American gifts. Of course, what I'm talking about the first red jersey or the first Grand Tour leaders jersey for any American, I think, since Chris Horner. Yes, must yeah. be. Uh, and then if we go further than that, things get a little bit more complicated. So we'll just leave it at that. Uh, first one since Chris Horner, and it is none other than Durango local. Uh, yeah, from my hometown, Sepp Kuss. And we're very excited about that. And we're going to talk a little bit about whether we think he can actually win this Vuelta a España. Because, well, there's a bit of a, there's a bit of debate here. He just got through kind of the biggest test, I think. He what, remains over a minute ahead of some key folks like Remco Venepol after the time trial, which was going to be sort of the, the, the biggest difficulty for him. We've got quite a lot of climbing still to go. Uh, the Angleru and, and a whole bunch of other pretty nasty climbs. The Tourmalet is in there. So what do we think, crew? Can Sepkus do it? Who wants to go first? <laughs> I well, thought you were just going to lean you, in and go... You read your whole article yesterday, so I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go first. But I have a I have a controversial take. But let, I'll let you go first. Okay. Um, I I I'm sure he can do it, and he could do it, but it doesn't mean that he will. But I'm I'm gonna enjoy the ride of Americans getting excited about bike racing. Um, like I said in the article yesterday, the Wall Street Journal's Jason Gay, a, a colleague of Joshua Robinson, the Wall Street Journal. He put a paragraph in his like big NFL preview about whether Sepkus can win the Vuelta. So if this is like, if we're taking the barometer of the American press and they are as excited as it's possible to be about the prospect of Kuss winning the third best Grand Tour, um, I am just waiting for the inevitable, which is Evenepoel, Roglic, or Vingago stomping all over his and your country's dreams. Oh. Um, I just think it's just going to happen, isn't it? I think he's too nice to beat those three. Possibly, possibly. Ronan, what's your take? Uh, my take is I I think he has a better chance to win it than Evenepoel has, hmm. which probably means I he agree. can win it. Um, but I think it's going to come down to... I actually think it's going to come down to what the three UAE riders within like two and a half minutes do. Um, if they start playing team games and Yumbo have to start playing team games... Uh, there's a lot of talk about Roglic and what do you call the guy that won the tour? I've been away for a while. Vingo. Uh, Vingo. <laughs> Vingo. <laughs> uh, Ronan's got baby there's brain. A, yeah, there's a there's a lot of talk about those two won't want to steal the victory from 
Because, which I think might actually be true, they might not want to, but if you e start playing the team game and Yumbo have to start marking the team game, then they might not have a chance but to leapfrog unfortunate Kuss, who I think at some point is going to pay for the fact he's ridden three Grand Tours um, with only really the Giro being on his plan at the start of the Giro. Um, I think it was Giro Vuelta was planned, but then he got like two and a half weeks through the Giro and they're like, okay, now you're going to do the Tour. And then they got like two days out from the Vuelta and like, right, now you're going to do the Vuelta. And I don't think at any point during that time did they say, right, now you're going to race for the win. Um, so, I don't know. It's probably different in Kuss's scenario because he won't have raced those other two races for the win. There would have been plenty of days where he um, maybe didn't go as deep as he would have done otherwise. But I still think it's going to catch up at some point, surely. What I think is really, I don't know, compelling, though, is that we are in uncharted territory um, in multiple ways. First of all, we haven't seen somebody try and do this before. Uh, well, that we have done the research to find out. Um, and um, But also, you know, we know that Kusk is bloody good in the mountains, but for a long time we haven't seen him try and do anything in a sustained way. So, you know, when he's supported his riders at the Giro or the Tour, he's had maybe two or three days full on. And then a couple of days off. And he'd always have taken, you know, at the, at the Giro particularly, um, he took the first week almost completely off. He was just fiddling about at the back of the peloton. So we haven't seen him try and do this um, really for in his career, especially as he, you know, he famously said goodbye to the GC effort a few years ago. Um, so, I mean, I think it gives a really interesting uh, edge to the Yumba Visma situation i think i i just i imagine a situation in the team bus after, as kuss got to the finish just like kind of the, the richard pluger and uh and marion zaman the two top dogs just kind of looking at each other and just like hmm, what do we do now because kuss was expected to lose red plan, plan c yeah exactly but what i think is great is that you know if he does win which i'm still i mean i'm much less doubtful than i was but he'll have won by accident which is so perfect for Kuss, I think, not because he doesn't deserve it or because he didn't put in the work, but because he went into a breakaway as a kind of, you know, you've had a great year, mate. We're going to take it easy today. GC is going to back off, go and get a stage win, and then we'll go and win the race together. But he's now in a position where he might just do it completely by accident. Hmm. I'm I'm going to contradict myself and then agree with myself again. But um, I just remembered he was, wasn't he, in the top 10 of the tour until he crashed with like a day or two to go. So mm -hmm. not much easy days there to finish top 10 in the tour. Um, but then he has also performed exceptionally in the final weeks of Grand Tours. Pretty much every time he's been in the Grand Tour. Maybe not winning stages, but certainly I'm thinking back to 2020. It was a call of those with Roglic where he like dropped Waited for him. Yeah, yeah, waited for Roglic, and you know he's done countless performances like that. So I think it's just that's the best thing about it. It's just too hard to call, isn't it? Well, and some of the some of the mountains in that final week are. I mean, it's it's it's, it's pure climber stuff, right? It's Vuelta stuff. It's 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 this is what we we've come to expect in Spain, and it's some of the steepest, hardest climbs of, of any of the three Grand Tours. And he is a pure climber, and he just got through the time trial. So, what does this say about Remco Evenepoel? If I mean we keep we keep talking about him as like the third option to try to take on Tadej Pogacar and and Jonas Vingago at their peak, right? And yet he is now about to possibly lose a Vuelta to someone who, as you put it, Kit, is kind of winning accidentally. That's not really the best look for the rider that we've kind of put out as the the third option. Right? Can I just add that I haven't done that, and then back off a little bit. <laughs> No, but I, Kit, I do, I do agree with you. Like, I I, yeah. I, I, I kind of agree with you in that it's fully deserved and fully earned. But at the same time, the circumstances were largely accidental. Like, they they weren't planning this. Uh, oh no, I meant about stage. Remco being the the extra string to the uh, oh. top dogs. Because I mean, to to go back to the Vuelta being the climby race, last year's Vuelta wasn't really. Last year's Vuelta was one of those weird anomalies where they just throw in something a little bit different and the stages were you know, a lot of classic style stages in a way. And then there were a lot of climbs that ended in plateaus or that weren't particularly steep and they weren't stacked together. A bit like today's stage where there was flat, 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 flat. And then like, a, I don't know, like a race in the UAE when it goes up at the end, but it's flat all the rest of the day. So I don't know. I mean, this I, I will be, I think Remco is in a much better position 
this year uh, in form terms than he was last year, probably. I think he's a much better rider already. Um, I still don't think he's quite at the level, but I was very impressed with him over the weekend. Um, you know, he knows that he's outnumbered. And his tactic to do that, to counter that, while everyone's still together and they're not trying to rip his legs off in the third week, he's just setting a blistering pace on the front and saying, I dare you. And that's that's bold statement. And it's, uh, I don't know, I think it's a mental game that he's doing pretty well. The, the broader picture of what it means is that uh, now Ineos are going to save a lot of money because now they just have to buy Sepkus instead of Remco Evenepoel. <laughs> and then the Sepkus that we've all come to know and love mm. with his, you know, good nature, laid back attitude, suddenly he becomes like the worst guy in the peloton in pursuit of sort of victory for the Death Star. Uh, so oh. do we want him to win the Vuelta? Do we want to lose the Sepkus that we know? <laughs> That's what we have to really ask ourselves. I'm confident that, that that won't happen. I, I think he'll be all right. But that's the other interesting point. If he wins it, what happens next? Like, does he go for the Giro? Or does I, he go I, back to being a domestique for the two best GC riders on the... Well, two, two, two of the three, two of the four or five, I don't know, best GC riders <laughs> at Yama Visma. I, I think a similar question had crossed my mind. And I'm pretty sure Sepp Chris would just want to, like, go back to the day yeah. job. Yeah. And... You know, I hate this. Enjoy what doing what he does so well. <laughs> I think you're probably right. I, I mean, mm. the we, the only the only thing that might motivate him to keep chasing success like this is those huge bottles of champagne because he clearly enjoys those. I watch. I keep. I watch that like every day since it happened, and every day I always expect it to cut off earlier than it does. Like you see his like I, I Adam's apple. I don't know how often. I don't know how often it has happened, but it also happened after the time trial yesterday. Which so he did. he did it so again. Sepp Kuss, was the first time yeah. What? Sep Sep Kuss spent well, so th- one, this is extra funny because of what Richard Pluga was saying about yeah. alcohol yes. at the Tour de France. Poison. Uh poison. where where he called it poison and he said that the reason why the French never win anything is because Mark Matteo lets his mechanics drink beer. And then we turn around. <laughs> big beers. And we, big big beer, big beers. And then we've got we turn around and we've got Sep Kuss just downing was it champagne prosecco what are, we, what are we going with here it's um, cava cava it's it must been. be cava because it's spanish uh downing cava you know <laughs> a, i mean the skeptic in me says is it is it zero percent <laughs> i really mm. don't want it to be mm. i doubt it but i doubt it it, it could be no not so I, I do I, I do have i have a, I have a couple friends so sepkus did spend uh, a semester as a college student as a university student at the university of colorado in boulder uh, and i have a number of friends who overlapped with him by a little bit uh, and have plenty of stories that would indicate that he has been training for that particular part of the podium ceremony for some time. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to go into details. Did he do I a keg flip? Be... I don't know what that is, but it, that's what you do in American <laughs> colleges, You could definitely right? do a keg stand. You could do a keg okay. stand. Uh, you could do some of that. He, he, there, there are some stories of him um, arriving to the Saturday morning group ride in less than stellar condition. Stella condition rather than possibly, stellar. possibly. Although we're talking college here, probably more like natty ice condition, uh, uh. <laughs> and then proceeding to rip everyone's legs off, regardless. Uh, again, I, I think I don't want to dredge up some dirty laundry here, but uh, he has been training for basically since like sort of late uh, was that what, 2008, 2009? I forget exactly when he would have been a, a freshman, but something around there. Uh, he's been prepared. He's been prepared all his life for for this particular moment. As far as I'm aware, there is some performance-enhancing aspect to alcohol consumption. So perhaps this is just the latest marginal gain that Yumbo are implementing. And <laughs> while any of us are there sinking their recovery drinks, <laughs> Yumbo Visma are getting half plastered on the team bus. <laughs> yeah, the weird... My, my, whoop, my whoop would disagree with that. <laughs> yeah. The weird stuff Maybe. in the uh, in the bottles at the end of the stage is what... Uh, UK university uh, students would refer to as journey juice, where you like to can various uh, <laughs> alcohol and soft drinks into it, and then that's what you take on the bus ride into town. These oh. these bottles after stages are fascinating to me lately. Like every the purple ones, all the different everyone. teams have this black mixture in them. I'm, it's like dark time, purple. It looks like orc juice. But why are the they throwing into like, <laughs> that's a, yeah, water okay. bottles? <laughs> like, we need to find whatever. this out. We need to yeah, find I know we do. Maybe we shouldn't be talking about this here. Maybe we should be making a story of it. But 
I, I, we actually we've, we've had a couple of questions from listeners and readers on on that topic and what are those bottles because other people have noticed as well so yeah here's what i'll say I, mean, we're, it's we're, not, we're, I don't know if this is a vuelta related or those are vuelta related questions or not but it's something that's been for a couple of seasons yeah. across the entire season uh, pretty much every team are taking like normal water bottles mm-hmm. and either drinking the water or emptying the water probably the latter and pouring in these other mixtures and it's like if it's, I, I don't know, the whole thing just looks a bit dodgy, and I'm kind of wondering why don't you just put it into a recovery? It must mean it's not dodgy, there. right? Yeah, well, one would have to presume so, but I mean, still, why not just put it into one yeah. of your uh, Branded, sponsored yeah. beat ons that you actually can't see what's inside it? Why, why, is, why is it on these water bottles? Is my main question. Why is it such a dark color, and what the hell is it? <laughs> Is it like carbonated or something where they have to take it out of the bottle at the last second and it just for for mm. optimal taste? <laughs> I, I have no idea. Anyway, we'll go find out. We're going to send some messages around and figure out what those bottles are. Uh, we'll see if anyone will tell us, and if they won't, then we'll start That's getting That's the story suspicious. in itself. We'll force yeah. I, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't believe we'll get an actual correct answer. Or I, I don't believe I will entirely believe whatever answer we get. Because uh, I know for a matter of fact that quite a lot of the uh, the drinks bottles that various sports stars use, uh, a famous energy drink, blue and silver branding, um, doesn't usually have that drink inside the bottle. Um, so I, I don't know if there's something opposite going on here. Like I'm talking about Red Bull there and you see every athlete from White Van Aert to Max Verstappen and back to Tom Pitcock dancing about post event with these Red Bull branded bottles and I know for a fact there isn't Red Bull in those bottles. How dare you? <laughs> so maybe <laughs> maybe the bottle that has no branding on it and is transparent does actually have Red Bull in it. I don't know. Wow. There's just lots of little bottles floating around cycling right now. Like I watched a, a, a small <laughs> bottle of something fall out of the back of a, a I think it was Dava Gadu's pocket at the top oh, yeah. of... Hmm. Where, and, where were we when there was a there was a uh, Altiport this year? Oh. When is there France. not an Altiport? France. Yeah. Well, that's we were in France true. somewhere. Uh, anyway, it was, uh, it was up there. Um, yeah, watch the bottles fall out of there, and then like the Swanee ran back and got it. They care about these bottles. It's always a good sign when there's loads of little bottles floating around in cycling, <laughs> and that they can't <laughs> leave them on the side of the road. Mm-hmm. The, the connotation here for anybody that isn't aware, I well, I don't know if connotation is the right word or not, but anyway, the problem here might be that in a bygone era, we had so-called Finnish bottles, mm-hmm. which were highly illegal, uh, whether you're racing a bike or just happen to be <laughs> at a nightclub somewhere at five in the morning. Operating um, heavy <laughs> machinery, perhaps? <laughs> either <laughs> way, either way, they were, they contained prohibited substances. Mm-hmm. Um, and now, you know, to be, the flip side of that is that you can get things as simple as magnesium in test tube shaped bottles that looks rather dodgy but it is just magnesium some caffeine gels aren't actually gels they're just caffeine liquids that come in some of their bottles also so there's there yeah it would just be nice to know what's <laughs> what's in the bottles after the finish line and what's in the bottles in the pocket to bring it back to the champagne though or the carver um feel of a Ghana, Ghana's attempt was alarming um yeah it was alarming <laughs> Especially as he's won a lot, so you know you'd think. But I suppose he was feeling the pressure after Kuss had. And he's a big, and he's a big lad. Yeah, he's he's got somewhere to put it. Kuss hasn't. Did Did you see the Vuelta's very thirsty Instagram post? No, <laughs> I don't want to actually. <laughs> My life is fine. It's just knew that. It's from the time trial. It's just butts. Oh. It's just zoomed in on butts. I thought you were going <laughs> to say it's like the champagne stuff, but butts. No, is no, fine. no. Maybe we should butts check for I mean, the Vuelta's own in, finishing bottles. In, like. You, you guys should go look at it. <laughs> yeah. mm. The world is on one this year. Yeah. It was so it was like Ghana's butt. Here we go. It's a real. It's just butts. Uh-oh. And it says nice views today. Oh dear. <laughs> I mean, oh, and, and it's just emojis. a time trial video until you get the caption. Yeah. <laughs> Those emojis should never be used by anyone. <laughs> you're you're just never happy kid photo camera is in front of the writer they're getting drafted it's behind the writer you're not happy with that yeah Come there's on. nothing nothing bad about no. that video until you see the caption i'm i'm not opposed to this video in any way i just think it's funny that the yeah. vuelta social admin is quite was having a thirsty morning uh, and, <laughs> and 
Second week of a grand tour, <laughs> missing home. Yeah, it's great. It's great. All right. One last thing on Kuss. Uh, uh, you you probably heard it, but he mentioned that it was the first time he didn't get caught in the town. Yeah, trial. that was good. <laughs> Which is even better when you think that he was the last person to start. So. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely zero chance of him getting caught in time trial. He did actually do a pretty good TT, though. Like, he had a yeah. pretty solid mm. time trial. Uh, mm. So did Mark Soler, which is very interesting. Yes. Yeah. But, and, but well, I mean, that that level of intelligence in the joke in a post-race interview tells me that he is actually quite still fresh and yeah. probably will win this world. Well, <laughs> That's right. a good analysis. Yeah, I think he's a bit of an alien. I think we don't know what he's capable of, so that is a good reason why he may just win it. Yeah. Maybe if he hadn't done all those keg stands in college, he could have like won the tour. That's all I'm thinking about now. <laughs> he, he, just to, to to balance things off before we leave this, so he was distanced on was it Saturday or Sunday? The, the last time they went uphill hard on the mm. muddy stage, I think. distanced he by distanced by wasn't. about four seconds, and then adds really up. Trying. Kit, it all adds up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that yeah. stage is a good gauge of anything, frankly. But yeah, no, because enough. you put it on the angle route, and that yeah. four seconds could be four minutes. Yeah, it's true. Can, can we clip up all the beer talk and email it to Richard Plugger? <laughs> I just want to see his like brain explode. <laughs> all right. So before we move on from Sep, we must now make predictions. Kit. Oh, will, will he win or not? Will Seth Kuz win? I thought you were predicting the winner. Would that not be better? Nope. Will Seth Kuz win? We only care about mm. Seth Kuz on this podcast. I, oh, I don't know. Okay. So you just want a yes or no? You don't want who's yeah, going to win it instead? Yes or no. Want... Okay. And no explanation, just a yes or no. I'm thinking far too hard about yeah, this. Yeah, we really care about this <laughs> answer. It literally holds no value whatsoever. <laughs> no, I'm going to say... No, because it's in character. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ronan. Yes or no? I'm going to agree with Kit. No. Johnny? Mm. I, I wish I was wrong. I hope I am Yeah, wrong. likewise. That's why I thought so long. I'm, I'm going to say yes, because I want to send so many of the American gifts I've found out into the world. <laughs> They're so good. You guys have so many flags. We have a lot of flags. We should have started a flag true. business, not a media business. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say yes because I got to root for the hometown hero. I got to do that. Like I'm watching all my friends post them up on Instagram. This is this is the most exciting thing that Americans have had in, in cycling in, in quite some time. We've been downtrodden, our poor tiny nation, downtrodden in the pro cycling landscape. And it wasn't even your fault. Finally, was it? we have some hope. We have finally had some hope. I I I I hope you're right. Yeah, me I too. Just, I, I really think he won't want to, not because he's not capable of winning, but just because... Yumbo have been so flawless this year and that's just not Yumbo. So I reckon UAE or someone's going to win this well. Oh. Despite mm. the fact that Yumbo have the three best riders. Wow. Th- th- something just has to go. Like they can't go three Grand Tours in a season without like having a pit stop at the wrong second or <laughs> the Saturday or whatever. You know, something. Uh, that was the director back to Giro 20. Anyway, you know what I mean. K- Kaylee, if um if Kuss gets close or he like does it, are you going to start putting up like banners in Django? Is that, or is there someone already you think we'll start doing that i think there's a hundred percent chance of some sort of banner being hung across main street will you have a sepkus day probably will you uh, start liking the vuelta kaylee no i just I, I you all think i don't like the vuelta i like the vuelta i like the vuelta it's I, just, it's just smaller. I like the <laughs> idea. No question if, about that. If Kuss like get like wins it or like there's a final stage that they decide to put the coverage on at like an outback steakhouse or whatever you guys have over there, and there's just like all these dudes watching Sep Kuss win the Vuelta. The yeah, you Diamond know, Bell like Bell watching Saloon. parties. We could be the Diamond Bell Saloon, perhaps downtown. I don't think they have televisions. Uh, no, actually, uh, the the place to go watch Sep Kuss win the Vuelta would be head down to the ranch El Rancho downtown. Uh, El Rancho. El That's Rancho. so perfectly American. <laughs> we'll Go do an official us. watch party there. Uh, all right, I am cutting us off. We're going to take a quick break. <laughs> 
Got a couple other news hits to get into. Uh, the Tour of Britain is also happening right now. Uh, it's a bit of a weird one. I, I mentioned at the at the opener of the show we were going to fix Britain here. And, and what I actually want to talk about is, so we've got like a string of sprint stages. Uh, Love Koi has won four as of recording. Could be more by the time you actually listen to this. It doesn't seem like the best way to put together an exciting bicycle race. Any suggestions uh, for the organizers? Johnny, Kit? Um, I A lot of people have been piling into the organizers, which is just unfair, but that's the internet. Um, it's really hard for them to actually organize the race because of the costs of getting roads closed or like the actual the councils or areas that will actually have the race. So people were saying, oh, why don't we find some more sort of uphill kilometers or whatever? But the fact is that those areas, maybe they don't want the race or it's too expensive. It's the same with having time trials, like putting a time trial on and closing like a route is just too much money, especially because the Tour of Britain don't have a sponsor this year. So they're doing the best mm-hmm. they can. They've got Wout Van Aert at the bike race, Tom Pidcock. But the big problem is they don't have any bonus seconds. I mean, Olaf Kudra would probably have an unassailable GCD by this point. So maybe it's a good thing. But until probably <laughs> stage eight, the final stage eight, like... 50 riders are all going to be on the same time. Mm. And I can't tell if I like it or not. I, I think it's... Um, I think it needs to be applauded that they're actually keeping this race going because yeah, for sure. it is incredibly difficult to get any road racing happening in the UK these days. Um, and then I think the biggest problem it faces this year is that it's after the Worlds, uh, where in other years, a lot of riders were actually turning to the Tour of Britain for their world's warm-up or final prep. Uh, like There was there was some stat that used to float about about the amount of world's winners who did the Vuelta, and then that like seemingly from Kwiatowski in 2014 or something, that flipped to the world's winners doing Tour of Britain. Um, and with no world's this year, I think it, I think it's like, I think it's affected both the Vuelta and Britain, if, if I'm honest. And I don't know, there's, there's just something about this year as well with i don't know if it's just us or if it's everybody or what but tour tour france femme um worlds you know that whole block is just like to sit down and watch more racing on tv Mm. now is not easy yeah you need a really good reason well no that's not quite it but you need yeah you need something to tune into yeah and i normally do like i did the tour britain three times so i love the race uh have fond memories of it and usually tune in for that reason alone but yeah it's also yeah. great to see with the but the support on the side of the road because that won't change and you know you get people decorating their gardens and mm. making huge banners for the local riders so it, it is reasonably well supported by the cycling fans but yeah it's it's a i mean they have to do rolling road closures to make it viable and it's it's just i don't know it's a shame that it's had to be this way and that they couldn't have a hilly stage interspersed with the sprint stages. I'm sure it just comes down to you know what's going on in the areas yep. that they're going to and the, all the logistics that are involved. But yeah, we need a we need a big one day classic or something just to get UK excited and public local local councils excited mm. and uh, just I don't know drop oh, yeah, one into Ride London was so exciting. No, I don't mean Ride London. That was <laughs> that was a bit, well, it was better than the first four stages of the Tour of Britain though with the. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I don't know. Bring it, bring a race up to Scotland and have some gravel sections. Yeah, or some... Yorkshire Dales or something. Yeah, yeah. The, la- the last time I did Tour of Britain started in Peebles. There we go. That was, hmm. There's some uh, lovely riding around. I mean, back then the complaint was that we were doing longer, tr- we spent more time doing transfers yeah, than that's an issue. St- stages. Um, and before that, if I remember right, like when the Tour of Britain was sort of resurrected in 2004 or something, the, the complaints were about traffic and road closures and roads not really being closed and riders meeting oncoming traffic so it's always been difficult to organize a bike race on yeah. you know in britain we're not a cycling nation that's the big we, problem we do love to complain as well <laughs> yeah and people hate cyclists yeah yeah I mean, this all sounds quite familiar for for the american yeah. scene which is why yeah. we race around mm-hmm. office park parking lots yeah that's, we, that's remember, remember Brit, it could always be worse um, <laughs> Johnny, yeah. Johnny, you've been to you've been to Tour Britain. Previously. Yeah, I did the whole. Me and my dad did the whole thing as a holiday two years ago. It's great fun. Perfect. So you did the whole Ross this year as a holiday with myself. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I want to know which is better, the Tour of Britain or Ross? Ooh. My dad is in the other room, and I hope he's not he's not listening. <laughs> but the Ross was great. Yeah, the Ross is different. great. But um, 
the one thing I do like about the Tour of Britain when you're watching on telly though is just seeing all of these like at least, there's at least a few superstars on the line on the start line and they're just like riding past like <laughs> normal everyday high street brands like big Sainsbury's and stuff like that and I just wonder if they like if then they learn what those things are the things that are normal to all Brits like Wat Van Aert does he know what a Sainsbury's is now and for some I'm like he <laughs> must go to and like in the evening he goes to bed in like a travel lodge this is very low mm. stakes. It's not. <laughs> it's, 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 I would class it as whimsy. It, I, I that's a perfect word for it. I'm pretty sure Tour of Britain introduced me to Premier Inn hotels. Beautiful. So that probably does. <laughs> exactly. See? It does happen. They, like, they've, they've stuck out in my mind since Tour of Britain. They've never sponsored Tour of Britain or anything. Just we yeah. stayed there so often. It's, it's British had, culture. Like, that's what it is. Costa, Costa <laughs> Express self-service coffee machines in the, in the receptions and... Yeah, that used I mean, to be high tech about 10 years ago that was the cutting the, edge of technology the, that's Do, pr- the primary source of most of the cost of cups that i have in my in my house um but um yeah since then like it's it's one of the main reasons i only ever stay in premier runs do you do your sort of budget hotel options have the automatic waffle machines that are popular in america no or are you missing out we don't eat waffles we eat, we eat proper proper we breakfast eat crumpets we don't the have pudding for it. breakfast, Kaylee. We have real food. <laughs> <laughs> Waffles think, are delicious. I think a lot of them do have those automatic machines, but then, you know, hangovers and vomit and stuff, and yeah, they're, they're, they're not there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last bit of news for this week, and we're not going to spend too much time in this because there's going to be a fair amount of time spent on it on Wheel Talk this week. But this is Anime Van Vluten's last race on right now. The CMEC Ladies Tour is on right now. And she put kind of an emotional Instagram post up the other day about like wearing the earrings that her father gave her and uh, how far she's come and talking about how she... I think I think this is also one of her first races. It was under a different name Yeah, it was the her time. first race, I think. Yeah. yeah, or first pro race, maybe. Uh, mm. Under a different name at the time. But that's what the, what the sort of race has turned into now. And... It's, it's an emotional moment for one of the greatest cyclists ever uh, and certainly one of the greatest cyclists of the last couple of years. So, again, there's going to be a heck of a lot more on that over on Wheel Talk, but worth a mention here on The Placeholders and, and sort of tipping our, our hats to Anamik's retirement. Is it is it just me or does it feel a little bit hard to believe? Is it one of those, like, I'll, I'll believe it when I mm. see it? So, yeah, I've I kept mean, expecting I'd... her to say, actually, I'm going to do one more year. But the more she keeps saying posting these videos and pictures it's like yeah maybe she's actually going to do it now she's got to go race gravel with uh, Alejandro Valverde next yeah. year yeah get some brown you shorts on you know got to get the brown shorts on drop the field by like 15 minutes and win a very low stakes gravel race that's how you keep it going in your 40s apparently sounds pretty fun actually uh yeah, well, kudos to her, and and I guess congratulations to to wrapping things up. I think if she'd won worlds or something, she might have come back, mm. but. As it is, uh, I think she's she's fully ready to retire. Hey there, I'm Dane Cash. You may have seen my byline over at escapecollective.com, and I'm also a podcast host, and I'm taking the opportunity provided by this little break in the action of the podcast you're listening to right now to tell you that if you like bike racing and you want some pretty serious analysis, you should check out the Pretty Serious Bike Racing Podcast. Every week, I chat with my co-host, Cosmo Catalano, and a few other extremely talented analysts, and we break down all the big stories in the pro racing scene. You hear from former road pros like Abby Mickey, Ruth Winder, and Rona McLaughlin, and from insightful cycling journalists like Kaylee Fretz, Johnny Long, and Kit Nicholson. We try to dive deep into the racing action to talk tactics, smart moves by some riders, questionable decisions by others, unheralded members of the pro peloton, and a lot more. And despite my best efforts to keep us very serious, you can rely on Cosmo and the rest of our crew to keep the serious level down just to where it's it's just pretty serious, the the perfect amount of serious. You can find the pod on the main Escape Collective podcast feed, and we hope you'll check it out. All right, back to the show. Welcome back. We're on to everyone's favorite segment of the show. I don't know if it is or not. It's the listener questions time. Uh, We really like this part of the show because we get to answer your questions. These questions come in from our members, Escape Collective members, via Discord or via email. Of course, you can email Johnny, uh, johnny 
dot long at escapecollective.com. That's J O N N Y, no H. Make sure you that include is, is actual email address. I, I didn't. Think. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I've been getting emails. I, I was thinking we should probably also set me up with a Johnny dot long at escape. What happened when I was away or something? Given I. Oh, <laughs> shit. Just in just case, in we case. should just do that. I mean, it would make a lot of sense. We'd, you'd probably get a lot more emails that way. Uh, anyway, you can you can email your questions to Johnny. You you must include your member number. So yeah. if you are not a member, we're just going to get, even if your question is hilarious and we love it, we're not answering it. We're putting our foot down. you got to be a member. So you got to include your member number when you email Johnny. You can also hit the what? member Discord, of course. Actually, we're going to go one step further. Questions that we like that come from non-members, we're going to pass them to members to send to us. Yes. Those there members <laughs> will be credited. And then I'm the going question. to sign your email up for loads of mailing lists that you don't want to receive. <laughs> there you go. That is the retribution. So we have both a listener question today and we have an agony aunt coming up right afterward. Johnny, let's kick off the listener question. What is our listener question and from whom today? Today, our listener question comes from Rich B, and he asks, who would win in a fight wearing cycling cleats, Kaylee Fretz or Johnny Long? Also, same question for all combinations of staff. And if I was good at maths, I think that would probably produce a result of like more than a thousand matchups. <laughs> so. Maybe we won't go through everybody. <laughs> no. Uh, but we could go through the people on this podcast for sure. So, obviously, Johnny, I, you and I, I don't think we can answer this. It's got to no. go to Ronan and Kit. Yeah. Can I clarify one thing? Wearing cycling cleats, does that mean cycling shoes with cleats on them, or does that mean only wearing oh, cycling yes, cleats? Oh, yes, Mr. Pedant. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> wearing your damn cycling shoes, Ronan. Come on. <laughs> yeah, now I want to fight you, Ronan. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, who wins? Pardon, you know. Kit, who wins? What sort of fight are we talking? Hand-to-hand? Swords? <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. That was unconvincing. I think it, it was for those who could. Based see, on what Kaylee's just yeah. done, I'd say Johnny. <laughs> Kaylee was also not... Johnny's tall. I think I think Johnny... Kaylee's a bit scrappy. I can I reckon he can hand himself in a little scrap though. I can see he, the like, like the, the red mist descending. I don't I think I have that. Arms. I don't have that, uh, that in me. I got reach. I have, I have another important background question. Have, have either of you ever been in a fight? No, of course not. I do. Johnny's I'm on a so podcast. laid down, he's horizontal. It's... <laughs> no one who's been yeah. on a podcast ever been in a fight. That's just the rule. Well, have you true. ever? Be, have you ever been fought at? No. Fought at. Love that. I've been fought at, but in have like you? third grade. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I don't think it counts. Did Did you fight back? Yeah. How long ago uh, was yeah. this? Two weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> You versus a third grader. Well, I fought back. I fought back. I think it, it got it got separated by the teacher relatively quickly, so I didn't really get didn't really get into it. But I was definitely fought. I out. I can't remember why. Kaylee, I, I I think John had won because Kelly. I know you use Luke Keel pedals and cleats, mm. and you would get off to a good start because you're more used to wearing cycling shoes. Johnny doesn't have that much experience in the the dance required to stay upright in cycling shoes. So you get off to a good start, but then the little grippers from the keel cleats would rip loose with all the sort of jumping about and all, as they do, then those things are lethal slippy, so you would end up on the floor, and then it's Johnny's, it's Johnny's fight at that point. I think also, so. Also, despite not riding that much, uh, my, like, the actual cleat bit uh, is always, like, very run down, so it would just be, like, oh. running around in... Just the, like without the attachment bit. I mean, I'm trying to talk tech here, and I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. To yeah, be honest. doing well. <laughs> so it'd be more slippy, I reckon. I reckon you'd have more grip. I mean, I personally think Johnny would win. Uh, you've got a size advantage on me, although I do probably have a, I maybe have a reach advantage. Yeah. Long, really long ape index. Um, it would be, Next, it'd be close. It'd be a tough battle. I think. Next year, the tour, maybe we just, you know, get to week two and we just, <laughs> just we, we decide to. <laughs> answer these questions for real yeah ian (laughs) ian definitely won't be into it no but he can referee and commentate i think he wouldn't be able to watch i think he's such a sweet sensitive soul that he wouldn't even be able to watch or be in the vicinity of any sort of physical (laughs) altercation well thanks to rich b for the question uh i think i think johnny to be honest i think johnny would probably win uh for mostly the reasons that ronan is mentioning my look cleats would just start start disintegrating and then what are you going to do from there (laughs) 
I, it, it's an impossible to answer because I can't imagine either of you's fighting. <laughs> <laughs> with with anybody, not just with each other. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I feel like I saw Johnny come pretty close to fighting some Dane in some Danes. Oh, I did. Yeah, Uh, and that's the other reason why I think Johnny would 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 take it. Only got one. I saw the I saw the red mist descend. uh, Yeah. That. Oh, yeah. That's true. Actually, I was ready. I was ready because he was very rude to Josh. (laughs) He was. He was extremely rude to Joshua Robinson of the Wall Street Journal. Yeah. Uh, And we will not stand for that. So Johnny is the winner. Thanks to Rich B for the question. Uh, we have an we have an agony aunt. I'm still not entirely clear what this is. But it's a dear Abby, I think, is what we decided is for for the American listeners out there. Okay. So what is our what's our question, Johnny? Okay, so I'm going to preface this with saying we got a bunch of emails sent in, which is really nice to see. Uh, and I think due to the demographics of our audience, a lot of them are obviously going to come from guys, and this and like a lot of them because we've like asked for sort of domestic issues or just issues in life a lot of them uh like from husbands about wives not not like bad things but just like it's from that stance and so but i I want to ask that if there are female listeners out there please send some in so this doesn't just become like a sort of jeremy clarkson-esque phone in where it's just people (laughs) asking for advice about their wives um but it's a it's a good it's a good dilemma and seeing as half of this podcast have wives, I feel like maybe we'll get some good advice. But it's a good dilemma, so I'll, I'll stop rambling and get into it. Um, okay, it's from... I, I'm actually not going to say the name, because I feel like that might deter people <laughs> from from sending in in the future. I'll say it's from, it's from Mark. Thank you, right. Mark, for emailing in. Okay, Mark writes, I've apparently, with quotation mark, quotation marks around the apparently got an agreement with my wife of 17 years that if i get another bike we have to get another dog we already have two labradors and i have two bikes plus one of my son's bikes you know he's he's moved out so the but left the bike so and he's made it fit for him but technically still only has two bikes which i think you know we'll referee this that's that's a valid um there is the possibility that they could like be an opportunity to adopt another dog but Mark is assumed he assumes that the agreement goes in the opposite direction too. But at this point, he can't afford another bike, so now he's got three options. Option number one: accept that my wife wears the trousers and let her have the additional hound. Option two: let her have the additional dog and keep a bike in credit. Number three: Ooh. dig my heels in and say no, as another dog will likely prevent me being able to afford the additional bike in the short to medium term. He wrote dog as the additional dog, but I think he meant additional bike. Um, mm-hmm. I like this because I like this email from Mark because while being like a, a decent dilemma, there is like a lot of truth written in this email. Like this is not made up for our benefit. This is something he has been toiling with. I like the idea of a dog on credit, a credit yeah. dog. Or a credit bike. Yeah. Credit bike. Yeah. My parents actually did this. Um, we had one Labrador and my mum really wanted a second Labrador. My dad said, well, if you get a new dog, then I get a new car. Um, mm. Now, th- this was delivered with the assumption that my mum wasn't really being serious. But literally 30 minutes later, she'd found a dog nearby. And a week <laughs> later, we had an extra dog. And two years later, my dad had a new car. So the credit <laughs> thing does work. <laughs> I, I, w- I was a little bit confused, Johnny. Mark, I, I thought you were going to say Mark was okay with getting an extra dog as so long as he got an extra bike, but he doesn't actually want an extra dog. Is that the gist of this? Yeah, and I'm not even sure if he wants an extra bike, to be honest. Oh. It sounds like it, <laughs> okay. it sounds like the sort of situation where he's made this this agreement, so like, and now it's like an arms race. Nose, he's going <laughs> to yeah. cut off his nose to spite his face. He's like, well, you're getting something I don't want, so I'm getting something I don't want. He's stuck think, in a unique bind. A, yeah, it's a, a really unique bind. Contractual it's like a Cold bind. War anyway. nuclear arms race where he's Russia, and he's just like, well, i got to get another bike because they've got another dog. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I I thought the solution. I thought he wanted an extra bike, but didn't want an extra dog. And I thought the solution might have been to lease the bike because then technically he's not the Ooh. owner of the bike. The leasing company is. Mm. But if he doesn't want the bike and he doesn't want the dog, I mean, he must I want the bike. I, Who doesn't I mean, want yeah. the bike? Yeah, I think he'd yeah. like it, but it's just the I think the cost because he realizes that if he has another dog as well, like paying for three dogs, that's mental. Um, and then another, and then on top of the bike, I imagine that would impair his quality of life 
quite a bit. How ex- how expensive is a dog? Well, once you've got two, a third one, it's probably not going to be that different. That's but true. But they do cost a lot to insure. Yeah. If you do that, which so you even have to insure th- a dog. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, oh, they, God, get, they yeah. get sick, don't they? Yeah, oh, it's like bills. medical insurance. And then for your dog. and then mm-hmm. it, going and getting them vaccines and stuff. Just to you, be clear, the NHS doesn't cover dogs. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, so, so you have the American healthcare system, but only for dogs. Yes. Yeah, pretty much. Well, all all animals. All animals, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I still think that I still think that the bike on credit, get the dog, mm. three dogs, you, you got economies of scale coming into play at that yes. point. You you know you're buying the you're buying the the big bulk dog food bag. You've got all these other things going on. <laughs> I think. I think you can. I think you could do three dogs, and then you know somewhere down the line, you ha- you now have a, a new bike in your back pocket at at whatever point you so desire. Maybe there's some new technology coming down the pike mm-hmm. that we don't know about yet. You're really gonna want this new bike. It's in your back pocket. That's what I think. I, I hope he's not as, as hoping for actual serious solutions here, because first of all, the one I already proposed, leasing the bike. Yeah, do not do that. Uh, <laughs> secondly, this next proposal I think solves the whole equation because if he had three dogs and had to get an extra bike, surely the solution is to get a cargo bike, <gasps> and then he can take his three dogs in the cargo bike. And who does? Who doesn't want a cargo bike? I mean, yeah. you could take them in the cargo bike to the place that you want to go for a walk. You get a bike ride. You get a new bike. You get an extra dog. It's all justifiable, and and then you Everybody's launch happy. an Instagram page of dogs in a cargo bike. Oh, you build yeah. that. You influencer. build that account. You then start cargo selling dogs. like affiliate brand deals, whatever. And then you have the money to then buy as many bikes and dogs as you want. And then next thing you know, billion dollar company. You're running your own podcast in agony aunt because it worked out for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, we solved it. There you go, mm-hmm. Mark. There's your. A, uh, a big like bucket cargo bike, like a, a box feats, right? Yeah. So you can when stick it's, all three when, dogs in there. When it's when it's successful, send us your Instagram handle. Yeah. You know? yeah when we'll, you're when we'll you're making a. Plug it. Yeah. yeah keep or us updated. Yeah. We'll give keep us updated on that. I hope that also hasn't put people off uh, sending uh, <laughs> dilemmas in. Maybe this is our one and only yeah. agony aunt. I was also thinking I, we. I, w- I won't be here every week, so the, the answers will be better in future. <laughs> Uh, no, we want we want we need more agony aunts. We need more of your dilemmas. Make sure you email them over to Johnny. I was I was also thinking that we could have branded this segment um, agony aunt, but spelt it like Nicky's aunt, and then read the questions out in a German accent. But I thought that was too much. Ooh. But I just wanted to let you know that option was on the table, and I chose the the sane path. I think if uh, Nicholas Arndt rides the tour next year, then we come to the tour armed with questions that we get him to read yes yes and and record them and then we use them for the rest of the that year so good. <laughs> all right we have a plan <laughs> thanks mark for sending in your question if you have a dilemma that you need us to solve for you send those emails over to johnny.long at escapecollective.com or drop them into the thread on the member discord we'll answer your questions in the coming weeks i've just realized a problem with giving out johnny's email address hmm. and that doing that you've also given out the format for our email addresses so you have you have actually mm-hmm. given out everybody's email address if you hadn't said that ronan we could have gotten away with it uh, <laughs> i i i'm just trying to fill your inboxes in the way that my inbox is filled um, i don't think it's particularly difficult to unpick if somebody yeah. really wants to get all of us they'd be able to work it out <laughs> Uh, plus, Ronan, your name's kind of confusing. Are there two dots in it? We don't know. Could be. Hmm. Is it MC dot Lachlan? No comment. <laughs> there's, an, there's an umlaut over the U. That's all I'll reveal. Yep. <laughs> all right. Email Johnny, and we're going to take a quick break and be back with your weekly pain. Welcome back, everybody. It is time for your weekly pain. For those who don't know what this is, this is our well, it's our weekly quiz show, and we are keeping track of points over the over the episodes. So, current standings, uh, and I will, I will remind you that a win, an overall win for each episode, is worth three points. A draw is worth one point. 
a loss is zero points. It's going to get a little bit weird with three people on today answering the questions, but we're just going to go with it anyway. Current standings, Dane and Kit are tied with four points. Of course, Dane's not getting any points today. We've got Johnny with three points, just behind Ian with one point, and Ronan, of course, with zero thus far. Opportunity to come back today. I mean, I've got a zero so far that isn't all that bad. I, I can only really lose from here and that I've I've still got zero at the end and That's I've true. actually been on a podcast that is <laughs> looking very bad. Though. I believe in you. I believe in you. So today's for today's show, because we have three contestants, we're going to do a little round robin and I am going to select a category of rider or team or something like that. Our contestants must guess or come up with somebody in that category and we will go around in a circle until somebody can't anymore. Once you can't provide an answer, you're out. Last one standing wins that game. We're going to play three games. Whoever has the most points at the end of that takes all the marbles. <laughs> because I'm so competitive, I know I'm going to be so annoyed when I don't win. Yeah, I can feel my, my heart rate rising. <laughs> they all lean forward at their desks over top of their microphones. All right, so we will again, we will go around a circle. And we're going to start with Johnny, this one, and then Ronan, and then Kit. We're going to go around that circle until you cannot provide me with a name. The category is, as of stage 11, that is Wednesday's stage of the Vuelta a España, riders in the top 20 on GC. Johnny, you're first. Sebastian Kuss. Sebastian Kuss is indeed in the top 20. Ronan. Juan Ayuso. Juan Ayuso is indeed in the top 20. Primoz Kit. Roglic. Roglic is. Johnny. Remco Evenepoel. Yep. Ronan. Why can I not think of any writers? <laughs> <laughs> um, the guy that won the tour, Vinigo. Vinigo is indeed in the top 20. Kit. Lenny Martinez. Lenny Martinez is indeed in the top 20. Johnny? Geraint Thomas. He barely <laughs> he is indeed in the top 20. <laughs> 18th place for Geraint Thomas. Ronan? Uh, Almeida. Almeida is indeed 6th place. Kit? Vlasov. Vlasov is in 10th. Yep. Johnny? Mark Soler. In second. I was waiting for that one. Ronan. Um, There's only a couple left. <laughs> Hugh Carthy. Hugh Carthy is indeed. Wow. Nice one. It would, only because he was on the attack today. <laughs> <laughs> He's in 13th at the moment. 456 down. Kit. Enric Mass. Mass is in ninth. Johnny. Can Utterbrooker. This is actually quite impressive, the three of you. We're going to get all of them. Yeah, we, we've been uh, working. That is, that, is, that is correct. Ronan. Landissimo. Oh. Uh, Landa is in 11th. Oof. I'm pretty sure that's me checked out now. Though. <laughs> Kit. This is tough now. Do, 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 I'm trying to think through the, the teams. Mm. Three, <gasps> two... One. Kit's out. We're over to Johnny. What do you got? Shit. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go with... I don't even know. Um, it's it's kind of rando so <laughs> at yeah. this point. <laughs> I'm going to go with... Um, what about... Nicholas Prudhomme for Age of 2R. No. Ronan, you're out. All right. What a great Ronan, debut. Ronan, all you need oh, yeah, is to give me one. one this time. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, yeah Kit, Lenny Martinez has been guessed. Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> Shaking my head. <laughs> We've got most of them, haven't we? You said Landismo. Mikhail Landa. Uh, 
Oh, I've. Oh, I think I know now. One, two, Bahrain. Um, what do you call it? Yeah. Mid from Bahrain. Yeah. What do you call it? <laughs> he's he's had loads of time. <laughs> That's true. Uh, he's wearing three, forty-one as well. Two, one. <laughs> All right. Oh, so is this oh. point is available for mm-hmm. if anybody can just yell one out at me right now. Go on, Kit. Is it, is it Caruso? Oh, I was going to go Santiago Butrago. Oh. Caruso is not in the top 20. Butrago mm. is point well done, Johnny. to Johnny. Congratulations. Butrago is still in. All right, so riders, you all missed uh, Steph Crass, oh. Augusto oh, Steph. Rubio. Oh, I'm doing that really annoying thing. Oh, I had it on Christian the Rodriguez and Remy Rojas. Ro- Rocha? Rojas? Rojas. He's French, so... Yeah, mm. uh, that, that's your top. He's in twentieth at the moment. We did pretty good. We're 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 gonna actually we're only gonna play two games today. I've just decided. Uh, we're gonna have one more here, and your category is <laughs> 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 your category is, and we're gonna start with Ronan this time because Johnny took the point last time. Your category is riders who started the Vuelta, whose last name. Begins with B. Nice. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> this is a hard one. Bardet. Bardet is one. Kit. Buitrago. Buitrago is another. <laughs> um, I think. Oh, uh, what's his What's his name? The bloke who's born... Uh, can't remember his name. Uh, I'm going to go for a, Three. He's definitely not in the Vuelta. Clement Berté for AG2R. Uh, not in the Vuelta. Johnny is out. Oh, wow. Ronan. Some people may know that I was actually at the first stage of the Vuelta. <laughs> and I was specifically paying a lot of attention to the Enios Grenadiers. And as such, I know that Egan Bernal <laughs> is at the Vuelta. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct, Ronan. Kit. Um, I can't remember his first name, but it doesn't matter. Bonnet. Uh Is Thomas Bonnet? Yes, Thomas Bonnet. Total energies. Back to you, Ronan. Um First name or second name? <laughs> second name. Last name. Has has to be surname. Yep, surname. And it has to be B. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> just buying time now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I'm tapping out. <laughs> can, can you give me one for all for all the marbles? No, just half the marbles. There's a lot left. <laughs> Is there a lot left? <laughs> yeah. Um, there are uh, 17. Oh, I've total. just thought of one. I've just thought of one. I'm, I'm, it's too late, Johnny. I'm pretty sure I thought of one also. If Kit doesn't have one, we'll go back to you, Ronan. I don't know why his name's popped into my head. It might be, he might have been at the Tour of Britain, but Cyril Barth? Oh, that, yeah. He's a big B guy. Cyril Barth is in the Vuelta. Oh, yes. oh. what a shout, <laughs> Kit. That is great. Uh, uh, unbelievable. <laughs> that is knowledge there. Uh, all right, Kit. Uh, so we have we have one point to Kit, one point to Johnny. That is a draw. Unfortunately, Ronan, you remain at zero points. Uh, mm. Both of them get one out of today's weekly pain. I told you it could only get worse. <laughs> I was going to think of because he always strikes me as such a <clears throat> peculiarity. Uh, I can't remember his first name, but Ball. He rides for like one of the, yes. the Dutch guy. He rides for one of the Spanish teams. That's who I was trying to remember because I remember he when. Ball. He's the one. Oh, he's yeah. the lowest altitude guy at the Vuelta. Yeah, because it's minus one, <laughs> minus one meter of altitude. He was born at a born really? at. Yeah, he probably doesn't live. I think he lives no. in Spain. Now, and that's what he's mm. always. He's always with Spanish teams. And, yeah, Burgos. Yeah, I've seen him at all the, of the bees. Uh, at the B st- names. At the uh, we had Bagioli, Balderstone, Ballerstedt, Barcelo, Bardet, Barreccia, Bart, Batistella, wow, Bayer, work, guys. Berhe, Bernal, Bernard, Bidard, Bissiger, Bol, Bonnet, Bouchard, Bouchman, Buitrago, 
and that's it. It's oh, quite a lot of beans. So annoyed I didn't get Bissiger. Yeah. Yeah, you should have you should have got Bissiger then, <laughs> Brennan. <laughs> Hey, you don't know what the pressure's like when you're like on screen and they're asking questions and you're supposed right, to come up and answer. I know exactly what the pressure's like. <laughs> yeah, you, you do, yeah. Anyway, that's right. <laughs> Why do you think I host the game? I, I don't have any interest in, 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 in pointing the other direction. All right. Thanks to everybody for joining us on this week's episode of the Placeholder Podcast. Thanks to Johnny. Thanks to Ronan. Thanks to Kit. Thanks to all of our members out there. You make this possible. If you're not already a member, head over to escapecollective.com slash join. It is very reasonably priced and you get lots of things. You get, well, you get the continued existence of this podcast. You also get access to all of our fantastic content on escapecollective.com. You get amazing galleries from the the Made Handmade Show. You get all of our Vuelta coverage. You get all sorts of stuff. So head over to escapecollective.com slash join right now. And we'll be back next week with another episode of the Place of the Podcast. Bye-bye.